In this video, I will show you how to farm Polygon ZK EVM in order for you to receive five or six figures. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you know what airdrops are and why people farm them and, and how come that people uh, get sometimes six figures for just clicking a couple of buttons for an extended period of time. You maybe have missed the wormhole airdrop or you might have missed Jupiter or Portal or you didn't miss those airdrops, but you've only walked away with like $20 worth of uh, token. That may be because even though you wanted to participate in these airdrops, you had no idea how to maximize your exposure to the total airdrop pool. Now this video will tackle that as well because going into my process, you'll sort of get an understanding of the different strategies that airdrop farmers use. And then you can maybe take something from that and apply it to and apply it to your own strategy. The end of 2023 and all of beginning of 2024, we have seen a series of highly lucrative airdrops. Now, there is a lot of skill and know-how that goes into these high-level strategies where people truly know how to increase their exposure to the reward pool. And because I did super well with airdrops myself, and I know airdrops can, can be very confusing for the beginner, I've decided to make this video to help you with Polygon ZK EVM and show you exactly how to farm it. I won't show you everything, but I'll show you most of it. And then if you like what I'm showing you in this video, at the end of it, I can tell you how you can get access to my full strategy, full transparency and everything else. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the process. The first step is you need to possess a MetaMask wallet extension inside of your browser. Uh, you can do that on most browsers, but I'm using Chrome, uh, actually Brave this time around. So you need MetaMask. If you do not have it, head over to metamask.io and install that on your browser. As a second step, you want to go to chainlist.org and on the top here, you want to type in Polygon ZK EVM with a space and I already have that network inside of my MetaMask. In case you do not, you click on add to MetaMask and you follow the steps. What happens after that is inside of your MetaMask, if you click on the network selection on the upper left corner, you will you can scroll down and you'll see that the Polygon ZK EVM is already is, is now added inside of your MetaMask. After you've set up your MetaMask and after you have added Polygon ZK EVM network, we want to add some funds to that chain so that we can farm some points on the Polygon ZK EVM, uh, in the Polygon ZK EVM net ecosystem. So we go to rhino.fi, uh, you'll click on launch app and you'll end up here. What we want to do next to add funds into this Polygon ZK EVM network, we'll go to bridge and I can show you a quick trick right here. Um, to sort of find out where your funds are, you'll go to dbank.com. You'll click on enter. Now my wallet's already connected, I believe. Yes, but here you can see I've currently $42 already on Polygon ZK EVM network from uh, a previous video I was doing. And I also have $27 uh, on this address on the Ethereum chain. For me to move some of the $27 into Polygon ZKVM, which is what I'm expecting you would be doing, is you'll go to RhinoFi, you'll connect your wallet again, and once you connected your wallet, you will select the Ethereum chain. You saw that the $27 came up on there, and you'll bridge it to Polygon ZKVM network and we can choose how much do we want to bridge. And I will bridge probably about 0 0.006 or 0 0.005. Let me just do $15. I want to leave some ETH on the ETH network in case I want to do some future transactions so I can cover gas on that network. And then I click on bridge. And here's what I need to tell you. So farming the Polygon ZK EVM chain is going to be more expensive than most other chains, comparing it to Solana ecosystem, etc., or Cosmos, use that to your advantage. What that means, if your fees for transactions are about a dollar each time, this will deter 
a lot of airdrop farmers that simply do not want to risk the funds or they simply cannot afford it. So as a rule of thumb, every single airdrop that is a bit more difficult to farm deters a lot of people from farming it. Every single time you, you encounter such an opportunity, I highly recommend you double down and actually follow through with it. Now we just have to wait for the, for the, for the bridge to go through and the transactions has, ju has just gone through. So to verify that this uh, bridge happened, We'll go back to dbank, we'll click on refresh, and we will see that in fact, uh, the Polygon ZK EVM balance has gone up and the ETH balance had gone down. So now we have about $55 total in ETH on the ZK EVM chain. Now that the transaction had gone through, what we want to do next is we want to go to quickswap.exchange. And once you're there, you want to just click on connect wallet. You'll select MetaMask or another wallet of your choice. You just have to follow through with the prompt windows. You need to sign in and connect. On the upper right corner, we want to click on Polygon ZK EVM. And this will prompt us to switch the network or unless we are already on it. And then we just click on enter the app. Here, what we want to do is, well, just swap for some tokens. For example, we can choose USDT and here we do not want to do max because Polygon ZK EVM uses ETH for gas, meaning we want to leave some ETH behind and for future transactions. So now we click on swap, confirm, this was $23, you'll see estimated gas fee is 48 cents. Okay, so this should have gone through. And we can quickly verify that by checking the balance. And it actually didn't go through, so we'll try again. <laughs> and this is nothing unusual. So maximum slippage, 86 cents. And this time we've actually successfully swapped $29. I just had to update the website and now it shows the right balance. So we're just going to swap it right back. And this time we can do max because Polygon ZKVM uses ETH for gas, not USDT. So we don't need to leave any funds behind. Okay. Now let's confirm the swap. 41 cents. Transaction submitted. And now we'll just have to wait and see if it in fact had gone through or not. Okay, transaction completed. And here's where I'll give you some additional sauce. Okay, so you don't want to just swap between two coins because you want to interact with as many smart contracts as possible. So if we just flip back to ETH, in an ideal scenario, if you want to farm as many points as possible, you would want to go through as many of these coins as you possibly can. So again, we can select um, 0.12 and swap $35 worth of ETH to Matic. We click on swap. So you're, you're aiming to interact with as many smart contracts as possible. You're aiming to perform as many transactions as possible and you're aiming to bring as much volume as possible in the process. Some projects care more about the volume. Some projects care more about the amount of, of transaction, the total volume of transactions. And some projects care about different criteria. These criteria are mostly never truly re revealed. That's why some airdrops end up being disappointing for some people and some airdrops prove to be very lucrative for others that were farming the right way, right? But you never really know. So you want to cover all of your bases regardless of what project you're farming. So keep that in mind, just to sum up, you want to interact, swap between as many coins as possible, meaning you will interact with as many smart contracts. You want to bring as much volume, meaning instead of me swapping here $30, you could be swapping $10,000. But just if you do that, be careful on slippage because this will eat into your costs as well. And I'll just swap it right back here. Swap it back to ETH, 36 cents this time, transaction submitted. So quick recap, number of transactions, number of smart contracts and total volume. And obviously I want to stretch it over as 
long of a period of time as, as possible. So you want to cover all of your bases to, because you never know uh, what criteria are what projects uh, looking at. You know, through a couple of clicks today, we've created some volume and we'll, we'll check how, how I've done in just a second. But obviously I'm spending these fees in the process. And if you're serious about airdrop farming, this is essentially the cost of doing business, right? This is your, your operational expenses because you need to spend money on these fees to create the volume, to create these transactions and to stretch it out over as long of a period of time as before the coin drops or before the, the snapshot window is officially announced. So unlike interacting with testnets where you request testnet tokens and you, it, it, bear, it brings no cost to you whatsoever. If you're, if you're playing around with mainnets, it will cost you money. But as you might have seen, and the reason why I'm making this video is because we all know that the airdrops can be highly lucrative. And trust me, I know this firsthand. So just trust the process. Don't think too much about the fees because you should have the bigger goal in your mind and you should know exactly why you're doing this. So yes, it will cost you some money. It will cost you a couple dollars a day perhaps if uh, you will be farming extensively um, on every single swap, on every single bridge, etc. depending also on how many different projects you're farming. Consider it your cost, your cost of doing business. And if you farm high quality projects and you know exactly how to farm them, meaning you know uh, some of the details that I've just told you, because these criteria apply to most projects, if not all, then you will be on the very safe side when it comes to then being airdropped the particular token and turning it back into ETH, Bitcoin or USDT or whatever you find the most valuable, also depending on the circumstances of the overall market. So. We've interacted with, with QuickSwap and I've walked you through some of the different strategies here. Uh, I recommend on QuickSwap that you refresh after every single time you approve something because it seems to be taking, somehow it's not updating real time. So here we will go to, we'll do one more swap and say we do 0 0.012 and we swap it to USDT again. We click on swap. Confirm, transaction completed, successfully swap the tokens. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to Mantis Swap, which is mantissa.finance. And what you're just gonna do there is you click on launch app. I'm already connected because um, I was just interacting with this website before. And here you can only swap between stable coins. Uh, that's why I've swapped to USDT on Quick swap. Here we just decide to flip it to to swap it to USDC from USDT. And so the reason why we're doing this is because we want to interact with as many different dApps within the ZK EVM ecosystem as possible. Again, you want to interact with as many smart contracts. So ideally, you could just go to USDC to DAI. We swap it. Uh, we want to click max. Again, there it's, we're using ETH for transaction gas. We confirm the cap and I think the transaction had gone through. Now we are going to go full circle and swap it from DAI to USDT. Again, we're gonna click on max, approve. We will also confirm the cap for DAI. And now that we have done that, we will be able to swap back to USDT. So just by doing this, you're increasing the amount of transactions you're doing. You're interacting with multiple smart contracts and you're also creating the on-chain volume that uh, are the three main criterias for uh, most airdrops that are out there. Okay, so now we have done that. We, we're back in USDT and now we can go to back to QuickSwap and then we can go again full circle and bring it back to ETH. Uh, see, we've approved the USDT and it still doesn't give me the option to swap. So I'll just refresh the page, click on max and just click on swap. There you go. It's been confirmed. So now that we've done that, you want to go back to RhinoFi 
you want to click on trackers and from the drop down here you want to choose polygons EKVM and you want to click on find my score and here you see that we have done a total of 494 transact uh, dollars in volume over 46 transactions and the last transactions happened three minutes ago. This according to Rhino5 puts us in the 44th um, top 44% of all airdrop farmers for this address and that's a very simple way to track your progress. I'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for paying attention. And I hope this has been a helpful tutorial on your airdrop journey. If you've liked this tutorial, be sure to visit airdropuniversity.com. We offer a lot more in-depth strategies than what I've shown today. This is, take this as a little sneak peek, but Already, I think you're equipped with a lot of knowledge that will just make it a lot easier for you to farm this airdrop. And if you have any questions about the community or about this particular airdrop, feel free to comment below. And now let's leave my computer screen again. So that was my process, or at least some of it, uh, on how I farm the Polygon ZK EVM. And if you would like to get these tutorials literally every single day, and you would like to connect with other people that farm airdrops full time, you can go to airdropuniversity.com and join our private community. So if you've gotten value out of this, please let me know in the comments. I hope you appreciate it. If you do, I'll make more of these tutorials in the future. And so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.